All right, guys, let's see how easy it is to set up a local development uh, environment using Docker. Um, we are here in Ubuntu, so we will install Docker for all the Windows versions. You can also install the package. We will just type sudo opt install Docker, and we will also like to install Docker Compose. We are waiting for the packages to be fetched and installed on our system. All right, we can uh, try to invoke uh, Docker, uh, just Docker image a list. And we see that we don't have permission to connect to the local Docker daemon. We can uh, fix this by creating a new group, which will have a privilege to run a Docker. So we can type sudo group add docker this will create the group then we'll add our user uh, to this group so we'll type sudo user mode minus a g docker and here we'll place our current user and then we can either exit uh, this uh, shell and log in again or we can just change our group so we'll type new uh, group docker and we can try to run the previous command docker image ls and we see that uh, we successfully can run the docker command also we can uh, create a one new container and uh, run a simple application inside so we can type docker run uh, hello world just to test if uh, the whole installation works. So locally, Docker couldn't find the image. That's why it's pulling it from internet. It pulls different layers. And uh, we see hello from Docker, that this is actually our container and this is the output from there. Okay, so now we can check with Docker image ls what kind of images we have. And with the container ls, We'll see the running containers, also with the ps, docker ps. We would like to remove this image, so we'll type docker rmi, remove image. And then with a tab, we can just uh, specify the repository of this image. Uh, it's called hello world, it's local one. And the tag is a latest. So we are targeting uh, this repository. Otherwise, we can uh, provide uh, also uh, the image ID. When we click enter, we see that we couldn't uh, remove it because we have container which is using uh, the image. If we list the containers, we see nothing but with minus A, uh, we see uh, the created containers which exited. So it's good to use this command. This shows you all types of containers. And uh, we see that we have one which is using our image. Let's remove uh, this container, docker container rm. We'll see that the uh, name of this container, it's called a relaxed cray. So we are removing uh, this container. Then we can remove uh, our image also. And uh, now if we list the containers, we see they are none. The same is true for the images. Okay, we are starting from scratch. And now let's set up our uh, development environment. Okay, for this we'll uh, create one new directory. So type mkdir web dev and directory. We'll go inside. And here we'll create a new file called docker compose. I know docker compose.yml. Here inside of this uh, file, first we will specify the version of uh, Docker we would like to target, and it will be 3.3. At the next line, we will specify what kind of services we will provide. So we will provide only one service, and we will call it web service. And then, again, with two spaces indented from the web, uh, we will specify what container. We will be creating a PHP container, so we will type container name. And here we'll specify PHP 7.3 uh, 
it will be our container name otherwise a docker will um, create a random name for this container the next line we would like to attach a local um, directory towards uh, this uh, PHP container we'll specify a volume and we would like to attach the local directory PHP which we'll create soon and we will make the remote directory of var www.html to point to towards this directory. This means that uh, the Apache server that we are going to install, its directory will feed from our local PHP directory. And uh, the changes we are making in this directory will reflect immediately the information which uh, the container will display. Uh, actually, this is our local directory and this is the directory inside of the container. The next thing is uh, what kind of ports we would like to expose. And since uh, the Apache is exposing port 80 in our local development server, we will be browsing through port 8000, which means that uh, whenever we type localhost 8000, it will go and browse the container um, running application on port 80. So this is achieved through port forwarding. The next thing uh, we would like to do is to provide an image for this container. We would like to use an image which uh, both uh, utilize PHP and Apache. That's why we'll go to hub.docker.com and we can just type PHP here. And we see that we have a local repository of uh, PHP official image which is uh, provided and from the Docker developers. And we can choose all the different uh, distributions or variants of this image. We'll use an uh, image which is uh, already giving us uh, Apache support. So we'll use this 7.3-Apache uh, uh, image. So this is the tag of the image. And we have to provide the image by uh, specifying, let's say like this PHP, PHP, because this is the image name and then the tag we would like to install and it is 7.3 apache so it's 7.3 apache so we can type here um, actually image and we can provide uh, this image okay we save the file and let's uh, test it in order to load up this file, we can type uh, docker dash compose and then we would like to run the configuration. We see that uh, we are pulling uh, or downloading the PHP library and docker is downloading uh, different slices of the image. This means that uh, whenever next time we would like to build the same image, uh, and probably docker will download only part of it which have uh, uh, changed or if we have additional library requirements it will download only them so we are not downloading only one big file but it's split it on parts or layers and one thing more to mention and that uh, on the first line docker is creating a default network which will provide uh, a networking inside of our container so now docker is creating the image and we should be able uh, to use uh, this image. Let's go to the browser and uh, this will open up the default port of 80. But if we specify the container port of 8000, we should see a forbidden because uh, we don't have permission to access the root uh, folder of the server. Let's see what is the issue. We can stop the container right now from running and by pressing ctrl c and uh, inside of this directory we see that we don't have an index php file so we can create now one we'll type nano index.php and here we can provide a basic uh, php echo hello from docker Let's save the file and we see that we don't have permissions to save the file. Let's see what's the problem. So if we go back one directory, we see that uh, the our PHP directory is owned by the root user. 
And so we can just type uh, sudo tron and we can type our user and the same group and towards this directory. And now the permission should be OK and we can recreate our file. All right, now we were able to save other things and uh, we can also use docker compose now to start again our uh, container and we see how easy it is uh, to start already created container and let's reload the server here and we see the index file is being uh, displayed to us and the php is uh, interpreted now whenever we make changes via the command prompt or via any editor let's say that we are running uh, visual studio code and uh, navigate towards uh, this file okay we're opening index.php and uh, we can just write that we're modifying the content and we save then when we go back to the browser and refresh we see our new content coming straight from the uh, container the next thing we would like uh, to do is to provide mysql support inside of the container so we'll go back to the prompt and we can uh, stop the container let's now uh, create one new file uh, which will be called uh, docker file we'll go into our php directory and here we can provide a docker file let's say i will type nano docker file inside of this docker file we would like to customize a little bit our php configuration we'll create an custom image which will grab information from our previous php 7.3 apache image and then we'll install some extensions for the php in order to connect to the mysql so we'll just type here from and we'll grab the same image as before php 733 slash apache and then we would like to update our system so we'll type run apt update and afterwards we'll run apt get upgrade minus y uh, in order for the prompt not to ask us questions and then we would like to install uh, the mysqli extension in order for the php to connect so we'll type run and we will use a special docker php extension install and here we specify mysqli php extension the next thing is uh, to expose at port which is uh, part of the apache um, just because we would like this port afterwards to be exposed uh, from the container to our local environment we save this file and now let's edit a docker compose so we'll type nano docker compose we'll change uh, our image so we'll not use this image directly i'll delete this line but here under the web we will say that we would like uh, to build a custom image and we'll grab it from the directory uh, php so context php once we enter into site of this php directory we'll grab the docker file and this will specify docker file and the name of our image configuration file which is called docker file and now as you can see uh, this whole stuff here is our first web service now we'll create the database service so again here we'll type database and let's say that we would like to give a name of uh, the container we are creating so we'll type container name mysql 8 and then we would like to use an image for this uh, container we can go again in docker hub and just type mysql to see what we can use and this is pretty good mysql with attack 8 or latest um, so i'll type here the image mysql 8.0 afterwards we will need to customize a little bit the build of uh, the mysql so we would like to use a native uh, password authentication so we'll type command default 
authentication plugin, which is MySQL native password. And also we would like to restart the service if any configuration changes or any dependent services also I like the service to be restarted. The next is to provide uh, some default passwords. So we'll specify them in the environment. And here we'll specify the MySQL root password, which is needed for the installation. Then we'll specify a default database that we would like to create, a test database. The next thing is to specify the default user. Let's say dev user. And the password for this user is dev pass. So these two will be the credentials we are going to use in order to connect to our MySQL and uh, we'll connect uh, predominantly towards uh, this database. And the last thing we need to provide is the ports which the MySQL will expose. So we'll write uh, here, let's say 60. 33, this will be our local port and the port the MySQL exposes is 3306. So we can access uh, and have connection uh, if we have MySQL um, client from outside connecting to this port. Okay, we save the file and we exit. And now actually we can uh, start our container. So we'll just type docker compose up. And we see first we are building the PHP Apache configuration. And we have a little mistake uh, here. Let's correct it. Our Docker file, actually it's up to update and up gets upgrades. But since uh, this is Ubuntu specific and we're using Debian image, we'll type up get update and up get upgrade. Okay, back again and running our compose information so we see this is the output from the update and upgrade of the system we see even that there is one package that uh, can be upgraded now we see that we are running the extension install uh, of mysqli and we are exposing the 80 port now we are on the installation of uh, mysql and we are creating the MySQL 8 uh, service specified in our file. And now the Apache is started. And so let's refresh. We see the service is running. Okay, let's go back and stop the container. And let's take a look again at our uh, compose file. Actually, we would like uh, first to start the um, MySQL service and afterwards to run our Apache server and the PHP uh, support. So we can provide this here while we are creating the, uh, the service. So let's say that we can write that this service web depends on this service DB. So type depends on and then uh, DB. Okay, this is a little uh, change in our file. And uh, it's time to create a file which will access our database. So we will go to Visual Studio Code. And here inside of our file, we'll clear the contents and we'll start writing. We will specify some variables. Okay, so our hosts. Actually, for the hosts, we'll type db, which is the service name from the Docker Compose file. So we are connecting towards this service name and then we'll specify the user. If you remember, it was dev user, the password, dev pass, and the database, which was test db. Now let's create the connection. So we will instantiate MySQL connection with the parameters of host, user, password, and we'll provide the database we would like to connect and work with. We can check if uh, there is an error. So we'll type if on connection error. Let's say we can write connection failed. And uh, 
we can echo the error. Otherwise, we'll just echo to the user successfully connected to MySQL. Let's save and test this code. We go to the browser. We see the site cannot be reached because the container is not started. Let's start the container. We'll specify Docker Compose up. We see we started the services without any downloads. Uh, they are attached one to each other in order to communicate via the network. And let's uh, check our code. We see that there is an error in our test DB. In cases uh, where you experience problems, let's check how many images also we have created. We see two images of uh, PHP and one web dev uh, web, one for MySQL. Let's uh, remove all those images and uh, recreate them. Okay, we'll remove all those images. Uh, MySQL, PHP and web dev. Let's list the images. In the containers and now we can use uh, docker compose uh, up in order to rebuild those containers and to connect them okay when we refresh we see successfully connected to mysql and that was our goal from now on you can just use your visual studio code and uh, develop applications locally without worrying about opening different ports or uh, installation settings using uh, docker okay guys if you have enjoyed the information so far you can subscribe to the channel